am I a fraud? <laughs> Actually, I think a perfectly reasonable question is, will the VA assume you're a fraud or think you're a fraud? Um, you know, in the context of doing nexus letters and dbqs uh, from out of state or in a different state than where the veteran is located and that is actually a good question and if anybody gives you a really definitive black and white answer one way or the other they're probably selling you something or they're just not aware of a lot of the different nuances involved right so legally uh, you know i'm a sci-packed provider psy p-a-c-t it's a psychology interjurisdictional compact so Actually, at this point, most states are part of this, are part of SIPACT, where psychologists who are SIPACT psychologists, they get approved to, they can do telehealth exams, they can talk to people in different states. You know, for, like for example, I'm I'm a licensed psychologist in Ohio. If I'm in Ohio, I can go and, and talk to people in all any other SIPACT state. And if you look at SIPACT's website, maybe maybe I'll link to it down below. But there's a link on my website or Google SIPACT map. Right, and you can see all the different. Uh, at this point, it's easier to say which which states aren't members yet. Uh, I won't date the video by pointing out a couple of people, a couple of states. So, so from a legal perspective, perfectly fine for me to talk to people in other states and do telehealth exams uh, through SIPACT, <clears throat> since I'm a SIPACT provider, um, and that's specific to psychologists. You know. Uh, physicians, other other types of professionals, they have other other rules, other compacts to deal with, right? But winding back in terms of what the VA's perceptions would be, and you know historically, and you know, it's a, this is a very evolving thing. Uh, it used to be for VA cases, I wouldn't do telehealth. I just it's not like, you know what I mean. The people would travel from all over to come see me you know what i mean rural areas not so rural areas you know to to see a specialist if you will but it wasn't until the and, and even you know the va's oig the office of the inspector general uh definitely put out things saying DB, dbqs were being completed by telehealth this is against our policies and it was up until the middle of the pandemic right and so historically it was a complete no no like the the B, the VA wasn't supposed to take them at all right and, and they were but they weren't supposed to and of course the OIG was like what are you doing and, and these are uh, of course huge red flags for fraud and there certainly were some people and and I think even uh, they they saw some people were maybe using the same stressor over and over again even right you know the same sort of language copy and paste it over and over again that's weird but um uh, so there's definitely the potential for there to be red flags and for it to raise eyebrows and even when it's funny because in back in the day when i um was only seeing people for va cases in person there were times when people would travel a couple hours from a rural area that had no psychologists and, and i was actually one of the bigger i'm in columbus ohio i was one of the bigger cities near them and it would be like they traveled from out of state you know what i mean the, it was just the border in a rural area i won't call out which state but you could probably guess for from ohio of course there's a lot more rural but um so of course that eventually got overturned and, and so and sometimes instead of actually dealing with an opinion they just here's this reason to not deal with i don't want to have to deal with something because i want to deny it right it, to be cynical to be cynical sorry about that it's, you know, that's that's the joy of me not scripting these is you know you never know what i'm going to say next because i never know what i'm going to say next <laughs> right <laughs> and we're off on a tangent sorry so back to this um you know out of state nexus letters or, or you know nexus letters from someone who isn't a treatment provider of yours right and, and that's another point is ethically and people may not fully understand especially in the world of mental health psychology ethically it's a it's in a very gray area for a treatment provider like someone who's doing psychotherapy counseling for you to to give forensic opinions basically 
uh, opinions on disability cases. And I, I personally don't want to say they shouldn't. They never, should. you know what I mean? Cause it's, and some people do take that opinion, but I'm, I, I don't think there's ever extremes on, on these types of things. Right. But, um, even like, uh, so basically based on, uh, the American psychological associations ethics code, basically the specialty guidelines for forensic psychology, uh, which is sort of like, a an additional document that goes along with our ethics code. And, and even, uh, there's a, a VA, VA policy or VHA, the veterans health administration, right? The, the, the treatment side of things, you know, a policy that I, I forget the exact title. We'll have to look it up, but it's basically like you should help veterans with their disability cases. And then you read down in the fine print and it says, except mental health people don't, don't fill out mental health DBQs. <laughs> don't, don't give them disability cases. Um, so that's, uh, you know, if I, if I, if I was going to take the time, I'd say, I'm going to, I'm going to drop, <laughs> I'm going to, it's uh VHA directive one, one, three, four with two in parentheses. It's going to be in the description. I'm like, I'm not going to edit it because uh, I'm not going to learn how to do that. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to sit here and talk and you're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> so it is what it is. Um, yeah, but you know, it's so we're dealing with a world where, you know, treatment providers, especially in the mental health side of things, ethically are, are like, they don't want to have those dual roles. They don't want to impact the treatment relationship while, uh, you know, having, having, um, having that. So they want to keep them separate, like in terms of the treatment and forensic or, or opinions on disability cases, let's say. So your VA case, um, I, to the head, you made popcorn for this one. <laughs> But, you know, so it's like, anyway, and you, you say, well, why don't you have somebody local? You know, and, oh, it's, there aren't that many psychologists, realistically. Uh, if you look at, there's, there's the American Psychological Association did a study like a while back and it's, there's one third, one third of the counties in the United States, counties, you know, one third of counties don't have a psychologist at all, right? And you know, a good chunk of those psychologists aren't familiar with disability cases. They aren't forensic providers. They don't, they don't understand how to do a disability exam, right? They, you know, not to say that's better than, you know, it's been too long for me. I, I probably wouldn't do a very good job at prolonged exposure for PTSD treatment because it's been too long because I've focused on disability for so long, right? So, so people ask me, hey, I, I think you'd be great to, to do my treatment. I'm like, mm, I'm a little rusty. You probably want somebody who's really polished on that you know what i mean so but even so even the va says they have a short shortage of psychologists psychology uh psychiatry too you know they're they're always in that top list of professions that the va has really a lot of difficulty recruiting there just aren't that many psychologists unfortunately right a high percentage of psychologists in the community have wait lists they or they're not taking new patients because they're just too full right? You want an exam with me? You got to wait a while, unfortunately, right? It, or lots of other people, you know? So, they're just, you know, realistically to say, hey, you're in the middle of nowhere, West Virginia. Why didn't you go to a psychologist in the middle? <laughs> no offense to West Virginia, but right? It's a, it's, there's no, it, it, but if you could Google and you easily find a specialist in, in this day and age, you could see a psychologist from your car in the parking lot of your workplace during your lunch hour what does it matter that they're in columbus ohio versus whether they're you had to drive across town to see them instead right and take off more time right or you know i don't know how i don't know how, how much i have to belabor their point there but so i think i think it's evolving to some extent but more more importantly um <clears throat> you know, when it comes to things like that, there definitely is potential for it to be a red flag. You know what I mean? So just don't, I don't want to downplay it. So, I mean, if you were getting something from someone on the internet like me or anyone else, or even if you're getting something from your family doctor, right? Uh, you need, you need to be sure that it actually has a 
a good rationale. It's well supported. It's based on your actual evidence. It's consistent with you. It's not just something where the stressor statement was a, a thing that was just recycled between a lot of people. Apparently that was a thing. I, I don't know much about it, but uh, I was not involved. <laughs> So, uh, you know what I mean? Uh, but even locally, I mean, there's there's a history, like a while back in Kentucky for Social Security Disability, there was an attorney and a psychologist that, you know, they kind of got together and so created havoc all over this region of Kentucky because people were using this attorney and this one psychologist that was working with this attorney and there was all kinds of fraud involved and that had nothing to do with telehealth. <laughs> you know what I mean? It had nothing to do with people outside of your state. So, you know, it's definitely things have to be well supported and, and based on your evidence, right? And you know, of course we bring in the science too. And the science is the same for everyone. You wouldn't know asking the VA sometimes because they treat the science differently for every person sometimes, but I won't go down that rabbit hole. Sorry. But, um, so yeah, so you know, whether you're in Columbus or Chattanooga, you know, it's, you know, you definitely things need to be supported. Uh, you know, <clears throat> I don't know. So, so you know, we'll tie this in. The the tie is supposed to to go to the veteran, right? You know what I mean. But sometimes, if if you're if if you don't have a really good well supported you know narrative and rationale the then the crappy <laughs> no offense to, to every cmp examiner some cmp examiners do a good job but some just have like you know because i'm talking about rationales that are unrelated to veterans medical evidence sometimes cmp examiners just have a copy and pasted templated whatever that might be something that a veteran were to buy from a terrible fraud provider right but it it's actually the cmp's opinion <laughs> and the time like the, the va might say well this is the cmp opinion and they just give this copy and pasted crap <laughs> you know what you know the the weight the, the the win right um when sometimes the cmp examiner uses factors like ob you know they're you know sleep apnea cases is something i talk about a lot but so it's like you know the examiner said, oh, it's because you're obese. And then you look and the perfect person has a perfectly normal weight and they're not obese. And they'll say, oh, it's because they're old, right? They just list off these lists, these, these risk factors, and none of them have anything to do with the veteran, right? It's like, because you're an old male and you're just like, well, they're 28. <laughs> you know, they were 28 at the time of their sleep study. How old, how old is old? It's not, it's not old. <laughs> Come on. So if, sorry for going on a, a tangent, of course, but, um, you know, I'll, I'll put some, some of this stuff in the, in the description, you know what I mean? In terms of, uh, the ethics code, like, you know, uh, like a therapist, forensic provider or role conflicts and things like that. If you want to really read into it, you know, I'll, I'll put, I usually use some of that in my description too, about myself in terms of, uh, the ethics code and everything. Um, but you don't want me to go through it now. <laughs> But it, it's something if you're interested in, you can read it. Um, I think I answered the question, <laughs> but uh, it definitely there's there's no black or white answer in terms of, hey, you know, is the VA gonna completely throw this out if if I use a a person from another state or, or something like that? It's evolving, you know what I mean. But this definitely could be a red flag, certainly, um, which is why need to be sure to get something that's well supported you know a decent rationale and it's kind of based on your own evidence right so thanks again <laughs>